Hello and welcome to the latest tutorial. So we are going to be taking a look at Visual Effect Graph or VFX Graph this time. So Visual Effect Graph, it's something that is available to us if we are using the Universal Pipeline called URP or the High Definition Pipeline, HDRP. Uh, so Universal also used to be referred to as the Lightweight Pipeline. So it's something that's available to us in both of those. It's a system that we can use for uh, creating some really quite sophisticated visual effects in particular things like particle systems, stuff like of that. So it's a newer, more, more sophisticated version of the particle systems you might already have seen in things like the um, existing setups there that you can use in built-in and you can use the, 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 that existing particle system setup in the other pipelines as well. Visual effects graph is something that is restricted to universal high def pipelines. Um, so that's just something to be aware of with that. So let's dive on in. First thing we need to do is it won't necessarily be installed by default. So this project is, is one that I created in the universal pipeline. So I'm going to select the visual effect graph and I'm going to install that. So the way the visual effects graphs work is we actually create them as an asset and then we can attach them onto something. And when we do that attachment onto an object in the scene, we can provide different configuration. So it gives us a effect that is able to behave like a kind of like a, a prefab in many ways, but a prefab that we can swap in different inputs to it. So it could be something where you know we have one one effect, but then on different objects we might apply different colors, different tinting to it. So what I'm going to do to start off with is I'm going to create a graph and we're going to create something where we get a bit of an explosion of objects to begin with. So I'm going to create and there's a lot of different options we have here. We're looking for visual effects and a visual effect graph. So I'm going to call this explosion effect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this into the scene so we can immediately see it, which is cool. Then if I want to edit it, I can select edit and we'll be able to see how this looks. So this is the interface that we have for it that we'll see by default. So it breaks up things into sort of key functionalities, key areas. So we have the spawning of the particles. And then we have the initialization. So spawning is controlling the rate and when they're spawning. The initialization side is controlling firstly the number of ones we can have, but it's also then controlling the initial properties we give those particles. So their velocity, their lifetime, things like of that. Update is for controlling then if we want to make changes to how they're moving, we might want to apply gravity, we might want to apply noise, things like of that. That's doable in our update section there. And then the output area here controls what gets output. So all of the previous stuff doesn't actually care what, what we're outputting looks like generally. So we can just control that in the output section here. So this is making it so that in this case it's outputting quads with a particular texture. It's having them face the camera. It's controlling the size and color over their lifetime. So let's look at some changes we can make here. So we wanted this to be more like an explosion. So constant spawn rates, not really going to do it. What we need is we need something that sends out a, a shower, a burst of particles. So we can do that. So let's add in a block here, which we can do by either in this right clicking and going create block or with a selected if we hit space. So then in spawn, we want a single burst. So I'm going to get rid of constant spawn rate. And then, okay, the amount, we might want that to be random. So let's say that that's random. We might have somewhere between 50 and 100. So we can have that. Now we're not 
seeing it happen again here because it's something where it's only going to happen each sort of time. But if we brought our scene view down here, we could select this. And if we make sure we've got this saved, we can just rerun it if we need to. Um, so that's an, a handy thing there. If we need to, we can just tell it, yep, restart it. And we can see the output there from it. Uh, it will also typically, uh, when we go and save here, it will also then kick off a burst for it. So one of the things we would run into though, is we're spawning somewhere between 50 to 100, but our system's capacity is only 32. So this is controlling how many particles we can actually have. So this is something where I would need to support for the 100 that I'm using, 100. You notice, whenever I go and change a setting in here, it will quickly do a restart of the particle system, which makes it really handy for us testing it. So, okay, we're getting a burst of particles out there. That's cool. But we also kind of want to have uh, that, you know, have some gravity affecting it. And that's okay, we can do that. Because what we can do is, this is our initialization side. We'll move this up here. Now we can get into our update side. So for update, well, we want that to have gravity. So we can connect up gravity. But immediately when we do that, we're not really seeing those particles appear much. And that's because the gravity is quite high, but the actual initial sort of velocity we're giving them is quite low. So this is something where we would want to ramp up that velocity quite a bit. So I'm gonna say, cause it's an explosion, probably somewhere between five to 10. And we want it to have a bit of a larger range uh, on all of the axes. We still want it to be primarily, you know, that it's going up into the air. Uh, but we want to have a bit more of a range so we can see that that looks a lot better. So that's pretty cool. So, okay, we've got a, things are falling. That's good. What if we want to then control what texture it's using? So we can change our texture here. And we've got all, obviously, you know, in this project, there's a bunch of different things that I could be grabbing here uh, and using. And, you know, I could create a custom one. We may already actually have, we can use the one that gets used for the default system. So we can use default particle. Uh, and if we save that, so we see those appear, which is good. What if we want to control the color? So I could set some default colors here or I want to be able to control the color of my actual explosion on the particular object. So over here in this section, this is the what's referred to as the blackboard. I can go plus and then I can add in different parameters here that will appear on the actual object. So in this case, I could add in a gradient and then with the gradient, uh, so this could be uh, main explosion color. And I can control the setups here for it. So that color, maybe the initial color, let's try and set something that looks like it's kind of fairly bright burning sort of look. And then I can take that color and then what it fades out to might fade that out to something that looks a little bit sort of darker so that it and also maybe a little bit grayer so it's looking a little bit sort of smoky just going to bring that a bit more towards red so then that color so that's looking pretty good i can also adjust things like what the transparency does uh, over the different points as well, which can be really handy. But I can drag this in and then link this up. So now the color of those is tied to the color that's being used here. 
I can control, you know, what it's using for its sample mode for how it's choosing to change the color. Uh, we also, with this, if we do space, uh, we can take a look and see. We could just be setting colors. We can adjust it via a whole bunch of different things. There's a lot of different blocks that we have access to in this, which is really, really handy. Uh, so that looks pretty good. And what I would notice is on the explosion effect, I can customize that color now. And one of the things that I really like with effects graph is, well, that's, that's that one. Let's set up a second explosion effect. So explosion effect A and explosion effect B. And we'll move B so it's a little bit offset. So we'll move it two meters to the side and it could use entirely different colors. So we might decide it's going to be primarily uh, greenish colors. And then we've got two different ones configured differently, but it's tied to the same base effect, which means, as we can see in the display there, we're getting that output coming through uh, for each one. So it means you can have a common effect that you then have different parameters you pass through, which is really, really handy. Uh, we can set up things like a general scale for the particles if we want. So we could add in here a float, uh, which would be just then the, the global scale for the particles. So this could be particle scale, which I could default that to one. And then with size, but put in size, you can see we also have this multiply option. So we set the size and then I can do a multiply that I just link up. So then now we have a global scale setting, which I'm going to save that because if I go to the scene here, I could select say B and I might decide I want its particles to be 10 times larger. And so now B has huge particles, whereas A still has much smaller ones. So it means we have, a, and I'm going to increase the size for A a little bit, and I'm going to drop the size for B a bit. Uh, but it means we've got some really handy settings there for it, which is really great. So, okay, that's pretty good. We've got our sort of initial burst there of particles. What would be kind of cool is if those explosion particles had a bit of a trail after them as well. It's a nice sort of bright trail after them would look really cool. And we can do that. Now, that's something where I could build it up manually, but I can also, if I just in the blank space here, go create node and type in trail, there's actually a template for a simple trail system. And initially, it's already got its own stuff for setting up the particles, things like of that. But we can see the key thing is, it's got the setup here for the trail, and it's actually initializing the particles normally as this other one is doing, but then it has this little thing, an update, that feeds this to actually trigger the particle. So if I bring this over, I can actually then get rid of this stuff and we've just got our trail happening. So I'm going to link that so that it's up there, looks about right. So what this is doing is there's an event going through to spawn stuff for the trail. It's setting up this thing called a particle strip which we can see it's inheriting the position, it's inheriting the color. So the trails will be tied to the color of the particular objects. It's updating the particle strip to add in this thing called turbulence. So turbulence is going to add in noise to it. And we can actually see that if we save this and take a look at the scene, you can see those trails don't just 
appear and follow the exact path, they move over time. So if I select B again and we rerun that, you can see those trails are varying over time, which is that turbulence kicking in. If we didn't want that, if we just wanted the trails to follow exactly where the particles go, we could turn off the turbulence and then it follows it precisely. But in this case, it's kind of handy for it to have the actual uh, trails in there already. We could also then be adjusting its size. So we have options here in terms of uh, being able to, at the moment it is already doing some basic setting of the size there, but we could again have a scale here where this scale uh, could be for the trail. So then we'll default that to one. We can again bring that in and similar to what we did before, can multiply the scale, link that in. Actually not the scale, we can multiply the size. So we bring that in, same thing, I'm gonna bring that down there so it's happening afterwards. So now with any of these, if I need to, I can go and adjust the size of the trails for them. So again, if I change that scale to 10, then we get these big, big, big trails for the particular ones. So it makes it really easy to get customization like that. We could expose something like the intensity of the turbulence there, and that would allow us to control how much those trails get sort of moved around. Uh, you could be applying other forces there to the trail in terms of things like wind or gravity, depending upon what you are needing. If we want that trail to look smoother, then we can increase things here in terms of the strip capacity, stuff like of that. Uh, we could also be adjusting stuff like the you know, rate that it's triggering at. So if I take that strip capacity and let's double it. And we'll also then double the uh, particle per strip count. And we can see that's tending to be a bit smoother. If we took the rate here, let's, let's drop that rate significantly to three and then see what happens. So we drop that to three. You can see the real huge sort of lag there. So the higher this rate is, uh, the more sort of it's going to be able to track the particular particles. So with that, quite smooth. We could then ramp that up even further and bring that up to sort of 60. And then we've got pretty smooth sort of tracking of the particles there. So a lot of different options that we've got uh, for configuring these, which is really cool. So we've got trails, We've got our sort of explosion thing happening there. Uh, and this is the thing, we can set up quite complicated systems here because if we wanted, we could then also be, you know, emitting further things because we've got our spawn here. Well, we could also be spawning stuff like a, a set of things for some smoke and everything. So we could have another spawn and then what we could be doing here is this might be uh, spawning at a particular rate. Uh, and this could be just a little bit of sort of smoke stuff like of that. Uh, we also, if we take a look at the other spawn options that we've got, we've got sort of periodic bursts. So that would allow us to, if we wanted to have a little bit of a delay and then the sort of puffs of smoke, things like that coming out, or there might be sort of follow on sparks that happen. So we could have that single burst and then we could have a smaller burst afterwards. So that delay, we might say, okay, somewhere randomly between one and two, we might have again, random amount of ones and we might say that this 
Uh, we'll keep it fairly low. We'll say somewhere between 25 and 50. So that's pretty good. So this, one of the things we can try and do is if we link it up like that, see how we just get periodic random ones bursting out and those ones still have the trails. So what we can have these connected up like this, if we wanted to do something where this second set we're using a more sort of different appearance. So if we were wanting to initialize those particles differently, so if any of the blocks here we were wanting something to be different, then we can't feed in at a later stage. So we couldn't have a different initialize that then feeds into this same update. That's not going to work for this. So that's something to be aware of that we can't go and do that. You know, you can't go and set up in here another uh, initialize one that's part of that same system. It won't work like that. And if we connected this over to here and severed this link, it won't actually let us do this. What it will do is it severed that other link there. So that's something where you can't just go and um, only use a couple of parts of it. It's a case of the spawning absolutely can feed in uh, separately, but the rest unfortunately is not going to be able to. So it's just something to be aware of that we can create compound ones here, uh, but we, if we wanted to have a lot of uh, control over the appearance and have different appearance for each set of spawning, uh, that's going to tend to typically mean duplication of the setup here, uh, which is very doable, but just something to be aware of for that. So, okay, this is pretty cool. We've got control over these things. Uh, what if we wanted to then actually change any of these in code? That's something where, what if we want a setting on here and you know that particle scale is actually getting changed via code at runtime. So I'm going to create a C sharp script and I'm going to call this VFX demo. And I'm going to attach this onto both of these and we'll see how we can actually go about changing these parameters. So we'll give both of these the script and then we're going to open up the script and we'll see how we can actually edit these. So first thing we need to do is bring in using unityengine.vfx. What that will mean is we can then, because we need to talk to the particular effect, we have a visual effect here and we'll call that linked effect. And I'm just going to control the uh, particle size here. So I'm going to set up a float and this will be particle scale. And I'm going to default that to one. And then we'll just do a simple setup to avoid it uh, constantly sending it through. Uh, last particle scale, and we'll default that to something ridiculous. So then here we can say, well, if last particle scale is not equal to particle scale, let's say we update it, and then we need to change it on the effect. So we can do linked effect, and then we have set, and we have a lot of different sets here for all the different types of parameters. In this case, we're dealing with a float. So we need to give it the name. And so if we take a look, the name is particle scale. So we set this to particle scale, and then we give it the new value. So that will just send through that scale to it. So if we then test this, so we'll need to run it to actually see it happen. Uh, but then we'll be able to observe what happens there with it. So we can then go and test this. So first thing we do is each of our effects, we link them up to 
to the particular visual effect that they're controlling. And then we're going to run this and run it. We should see the scale change for both of them to being quite small. For effect A, if I change this to 5, then it increases, we can change it to 20. So we can see the effect of the scale is actually changing there. So quite easy to send through uh, different bits of data there to it in terms of passing through any of those parameters that we've exposed, which is really, really handy. So it makes it quite easy to sort of spawn these in, have these do what we're needing them to, uh, and then just sort of customize the stuff if we have to. Uh, there's further things we can be tweaking and adjusting here as well. So we can also, if we, you know, at the moment we're outputting quads here. Well, what if we wanted to output a mesh? What if we wanted to do that? Well, good news is we can. If we type in output, we have output particle mesh which, well, we might want that to use the same size setting, could use the same size scaling, could use the same color changing, and we could link that over, and then now it's outputting a mesh instead. We can control what mesh is being used, so by default it's going to be using a capsule, but we could change that, so yeah, actually no, we're going to have it output cubes we can control the texture that's applied to it. So we might decide, okay, let's, you know, we could use a, a texture that's just a plain white pixel, and then we can see the colors there. We could be adjusting scale and things like that further as well. So you can easily output mesh particles. So the other thing we can be doing is at the moment, these are just emitting from a single point. We can control where they're getting emitted from, by if we, in our particle one, under position, we can be setting the position here based upon a whole bunch of different things. There's some really cool ones where you can be giving it a mesh or even a skinned mesh. So you could take a character that can be moving around and emit particles where the position of those particles is tied to their mesh, which is really, really cool. Uh, it lets you do some really great effects with that. We can also just use stuff where it's like, okay, no, it's gonna come from a box, for example. So we could set up, so yep, its position is being set from a box. And at the moment, that's gonna say it's from the surface of the box, but we could say that it's coming from the volume of it, so anywhere within that box. We could actually then make that box something that is controllable because one of the options that we can actually configure here is we can give this an axis aligned bounding box. So this could be emission bounds and then we can bring that in and link that over. And so now the box that these are able to be emitted from is something that is a controllable thing on the actual objects. So now, if I take this particular one and we can show the gizmos for the box, I could then take that box and adjust it. And so now those particles can be emitting from anywhere within that box. So super, super handy being able to do things like of that. I'm also going to drop the scale of these down because that scale is currently a little ridiculous. Uh, that's much better. So, okay, we can be emitting within a box. What if we want the particles to be destroyed below a certain point? That's something we can do as well. So in update particle, we go to create a block. We have kill options here. So we can kill when they enter this bounding box. We could also have an inverted one. Uh, so we could set up a box here and let's set this up as the, we're gonna call this the kill box because uh, that sounds dramatic. Uh, we'll link that over. And so the idea is, is the particles now 
when they impact that will get killed. So at the moment, you can see those particles are always getting killed. And that's because the kill box here, if I show the gizmos, that kill box one, I would need to lower that because it's destroying the particles as soon as it's entering into that. I could also move that so it's above them. And so any ones that uh, we can see the location of the box here, I could bring this down and you'll see as those particles hit it, they're getting destroyed. So very, very easy for us to configure that if we needed to. If I default this back, you can see all of the particles are getting destroyed immediately. If I change this though to inverted, then the particles will only get destroyed when they leave that box. So it gives us a way of being able to control and manage this. And again, is a setting that we've got exposed. So we've configured the capabilities of this effect, but then the specifics of how it works are going to be tied purely to the actual implementation on the particular object, which is really great. This is a bit of a starting point with VFX Graph. There's a lot of different things that we could be doing with this. You know, we've created a basic explosion. We could very easily set up something where we had, uh, for example, just a very, very simple uh, emitter of smoke. So if I set up just a visual effect one for simple smoke, and again, I'm just gonna bring that into the scene. So if we were setting up something like that, well, I'm gonna go for this being an outputting of a mesh uh, because that's something where and it does, uh, there we go. Have to make sure you click in the right location. So if I output a mesh, uh, I am going to select that being a cube and I am going to just use the base white one uh, and then I can bring over all of my settings here and link this over so you can split out the one update to multiple outputs if you do want to have multiple different appearances for the output there uh, I am going to uh, turn off these two ones just so we can be focusing on the smoke so at the moment, that's pretty basic, sort of the appearance there for the smoke. We can make this a lot better though. So what we could be doing is, you know, at the moment, it's, you know, it is pretty good already, but let's add in some turbulence. That's going to make it that the smoke is a little bit more scattered. Uh, we can change the speeds here a bit so that it heads off in a little bit more of a widespread area. So that's looking a little bit better. We'll change the uh, ground color there so it stands out a little bit more. So, okay, that's all right. We can, we can make this better though. Let's have it that you know, in particular for uh, where it is positioning it. So position, well, it's gonna be coming from a fire. So let's make it that we've got a circle that it's emitting from in the ground. And if we take a look, uh, that's sort of looking a little bit better. We could customize the settings though for that circle. So that's something where we can easily adjust that if we're needing to. Uh, so that's from the surface of it. Again, change that to the, the volume of it. Uh, in terms of the settings here, it needs a position and a radius. So the arc there is currently for the full range. So we could set up a float here for radius and link that up just to that setting. What that would mean is then in this smoke setting here, our default value will make one. 
but we could change that to 0.25 for example. So we could control exactly how much uh, we want that to be. The smoke, we could start that off being a lot darker. So having it being a much sort of darker gray color, it's going to look a little bit better. You can also, with the color, you can actually do a bit of randomization for the color. So if we take a look at the color options that we have got, uh, we can do a set color random. Uh, you can also do a set color random from gradient, where what that can do is, okay, we set up here, we might want to have it initially. Uh, let's have, so we've got a bit of variation there for it. So it's setting the color from that. But then there are more options that we can do with color, because with color, we can be multiplying it uh, as well. So we can multiply the color at different stages if we wanted to. Uh, we could also do things there in terms of if we take a look uh, with the color ones, uh, we can be uh, adding color over life. So not setting, but adding. So if we do add over life, then we could start it out as what it's adding is just pure black. So we're preserving a bit of the gray, but then we're shifting it over uh, its lifetime to be a brighter color, which if we lessen that, so it can keep a bit more of that in there. Uh, we can be adjusting the alpha that it's using here. So that where it's there, we could lower that quite a bit so that it's going to be fading out at a different stage. We would need to then change the add color so that we could also just change that so it's only doing color. So it's not gonna mess with alpha here. And then this, we could adjust the location where it's fading out. We could adjust the alpha value at that point. You can see it fades out a lot earlier. So a lot of different options in terms of what we've got there for this. But okay, that's looking not too bad. The size, you know, again, we could do more with that where the size, we can set the size to be random. We can set the size to be random from a curve, which we've already got a curve here, but we can make that over life. Uh, and we can then have that be random. So we've got a lot of different options for that uh, of what it's actually able to be doing. So if we wanted it to be doing like of that, that's gonna vary up the size a bunch, which is pretty cool. Uh, we could also be checking in. We look at the other options for size. You've also got multiply options and you have multiply random ones. So we could do a setting of the size over the life. So we could go back to our set size over life, like we've already got, which generates it generally being fairly large. But then a multiply size random. So a lot of things that'll just sort of tweak and, and customize the appearance of it, uh, which is gives us a lot of options there. So multiply and we have our size random, which that could be between 0.5 and 0.75. So get a bit more variation there with it. So a lot of different cool things that we can be doing with this. Quite easy for us to uh, configure, to set them up, to have the different bits working there for us. So dive in and experiment with the visual effects graph. It's quite straightforward for creating some simple effects in there like explosions and smoke and trails and stuff like of that. So have a look and see the kinds of cool things you can be creating there with it. As I said, it's something that is there in 
the universal pipeline and in the high def pipeline has quite good performance. As you can see, it's quite straightforward for configuring things. And it also gives us, compared to the existing particle systems, a lot more options there for being able to do things like emitting from the surface of meshes. And we can configure one particle and have slight sort of tweaks to it in different areas just by changing in the inspector the particular configuration. And that's something that makes it really powerful and really flexible, which is really handy for us to have. Thanks folks, I hope you found the video helpful. If you're looking for the code for the project, I've made that code available up on GitHub and you'll find the link for that in the description below. You can freely use that code on any of your own projects, whether those are commercial or non-commercial ones. Uh, if you have found the video helpful, chuck in a like and subscribe, really helps out, really appreciate it. If you've got questions, chuck in a comment below. And if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, I do have a Patreon and the link for that you'll find in the description below as well. But until next time, bye.